Now, currently with how we have things set up right now, when we are running through our cities right here, we're outputting the city component. Now, within the city component, we have this static text of city component, as you can see, being displayed here on our application right now. Obviously, we don't want this. We want to uh, inject the information from the city into this uh, grid item and not have the static text. So let's go ahead and fix that. Now, to use this current city that we have uh, being run through our application here, we need to bind that data to our city component here. Now, we've already done this before, so we're going to say V bind and we're going to say city and set that equal to city. Okay, so now if we head over to our component of city and right below our name, we're going to say props, which is going to be set to an empty array, and we're going to simply pass a value of city here. Now, if we console, let's see here, console, or sorry, so we're going to actually, we want to console this to the, we want to log into the console, but we also need to open up a create it method, our lifecycle hook here. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're going to say console.log, and we're going to say this um, dot city. So if we go ahead and log that to the console here, you'll see that we have two return values from our uh, city component here, and each one's going to be um, our city that we have from our Firestore collection. So that is all working great. Now that we have this, we can start to build out our actual grid item here for each one of our cities. So to begin, I'm going to remove this H4 here. And we're going to create a new div with the class of city. Okay. Now inside of this div, we're going to start with the span tag here. And what we want to have inside the span is the city name. So when we want to actually inject um, our data from, you know, let's say our prop here of city, how we do that inside our template tags here is we do double brackets here and we say this dot city which is referring to this prop right here now on that city um, we have another value called city which is going to contain the city name so we're going to say this dot city dot city and if we save that you should see that now it's going to return the value of the city that's uh, being iterated through our v4 loop over here okay so moving on here we now want to create another div. Now this is going to have the weather information. So if we open up another div here and we say weather, we can start to populate our weather information here. So inside of our current weather object here, we're going to look in the main, which has the weather in it. So inside of this main is another object and we have the temperature right here. So as you can see right now, it's returning a value of 41.14. Now, we don't want to return decimals here. So what we can do is we're going to say inside of this weather tag, we're going to have another span. Okay. Now, we also want to open up our double brackets here. And we're going to use the property or JavaScript called math.round, which is going to round it to the nearest integer. Okay. So inside of this math.round, we want to pass it the uh, value of this dot city dot current weather which is going to refer to let me go ahead and bring this up a little bit it's going to refer to this object right here and then we want to say dot main which is going to refer to this object right here and then we want to grab that temperature value so we're going to say dot temp and then outside of here we want to add the degree sign because right now it doesn't have the degrees so we're going to say and and we're going to say deg and then put a semicolon. So if we save this, we should now see that span tag right below there with the current weather. So that's all looking great. So as you can see right here, we have this icon. So in our uh, public folder right here, we actually have the videos that we're gonna be using for this all right here with these <clears throat> uh, codes. And the same thing goes for the conditions. So you may be wondering where are we getting these codes from and what do they mean? So if we take a look on the uh, weather object here, if I close this up. So there is another uh, or array right here called weather and it has uh, the zero. And we're going to look here. You can see that it has these values down here and one is called an icon. So this icon returns what you want to call the current condition out uh, right now in that particular city. So if we head over to the open weather map 
uh, website, you'll see here that these are what each one of the codes means that were being returned. So you can see we have stuff for clear sky, clouds, scatter clouds, broken clouds, shower, rain, um, all the above. So this is where I'm getting those icons from, okay? So if we head back over to our application here, we want to dynamically set our icon uh, based upon what this um, current icon value is being returned. So what we're gonna say here is we're gonna open an image tag. Now we're going to bind, so we're gonna put a colon before the SRC. Now we want to bind this SRC to a specific URL, but we also want to dynamically inject the current icon because that's what we gave uh, the names to each one of these icons. So say for example, right now this is for Dallas, right now it is 01N. So what would happen here is we're going to route to this public folder and this conditions, and then we're going to um, pretty much dynamically inject the name of the icon and then give it a .svg ending and then it'll correlate to whatever um, condition it is right now in that city. So let's go ahead and just um, get this going so you can see what this looks like. So what we want to say is we're going to put a require here and open up some parentheses and we want to use some uh, backticks. We're going to be using uh, some interpolation here so we're going to be using the backticks. And I'm just going to actually copy and paste this in and go over it so it makes uh, things a little bit easier on my end. So what we're saying here is we need to get out of the current folder we're in twice so we can head to the public folder. We're going to go and do the conditions folder here. And we're going to say this.city, that current weather, which is going to be, like I said, this object right here. And we want to head to the weather array. And you can see here we have the first one, so we're saying zero to refer to the first array here. And then we want to get that icon uh, value, which is 01n. So it'll refer to this one right here. And then we're going to say .svg. So now if we save this, you should see that we're going to get um, some weather icons that are very large because we haven't defined any styling to them. So uh, that'll just cause a few problems for now until we get to the styling of this. So that's going to be it for our weather div here. Now moving on, we want to set up um, our video background and that's going to work the same way as this did right here where we're going to bind the route based upon the icon code which you can see the videos have the same coding. Now if you haven't um, maybe I didn't mention this. All this is actually going to be available, like the whole repo, in the description below. So you don't have to worry about getting these. You can just head to my GitHub repository, and these are included in the repo. Okay? So below this div of weather, we want to create another div, and this is going to be called video. Inside of this video tag here, we're going to have a video. And for the SRC, we're going to, once again, oops, uh, wrong screen, we're going to bind it how we did this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this whole thing right here and we're going to paste it in right here. Now the only difference is we want to change this .svg to mp4, okay? Now also what I wanna pass on this video element is we want to say autoplay so it automatically plays. We want to loop it so that it keeps looping even when the duration of the video has ended. And then we also want this to be muted. We don't want any sound from our video to be played on our application. So if we save that, you can see that now once again, we're going to get a console error here. And let's see what that actually is. Uh, let me see here. I cannot find uh, .01n. Did we do something wrong? Oh, that's right. We have to actually change this to videos as well. And that should resolve our issue there, and I believe it did. Let me just clear this out here really quick and then reload it here. And yes, okay, so that went ahead and fixed it. Okay, now also what we want to do inside of this video div here is we want to create a class for the background overlay to go over these videos. So we're going to create another div here with a class of BG overlay. Okay, so that is going to do it for HTML, but obviously, as you can see, we need to do some styling because everything is right now blowing out of the container completely. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's begin with our city class here. So I'm going to create a few new empty lines here, and I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to say our city class here. Now to start, we want to display this as flex, 
we want to position this relative. We want to say flex direction is going to be column here. We want to give this a padding around all sides of 20 pixels. And we want to say flex basis here. We're going to say flex and I spell flex wrong. That's probably why flex basis. I'm going to set that to 50%. And we want to give this a minimum height of 250 pixels tall. We want the color by default for everything to be white. And we're going to give it a box shadow here. And let's see, box shadow. And let's see here, we're going to say 0, 1 pixel, 2 pixel, 0. And we're going to say RGBA, and we don't want that. We're going to give this a color of black. And then an opacity of 0 0.05, okay? So if we save that, nothing's really going to change because the uh, current image um, and video is blowing out of proportion. So next up inside of here, we want to target our city name. So let's go ahead and target our span. And we're going to say for this, give this a Z index of 1. We're going to text, uh, text transform this to, let's see, capitalize, to capitalize the first letter, no matter what. Then we want to display this as block to take up the entire line. And we want to give this a font size here of 25 pixels and also the font weight of 600 font weight we'll do 600 there okay next up we're going to actually want to begin working on our weather section here so we're going to target our weather class and we're going to do this just below the span so we're going to say weather and inside here we want to begin by displaying this as flex so we're going to say display and we're going to go flex we're going to give this a z index of one as well we want to justify the content flex end and then align items flex end as well and then give this a flex of one okay now for the span inside of the weather we want to alter this a little bit from our default span up here so we want this to be a little larger, so we're going to say font size, and we're going to set this to 35 pixels. And then we want to do a margin on the right-hand side of 8 pixels. Okay, now next up we want to get to our image here. So right now the image is completely out of proportion. It's blowing out of the, uh, the viewport right now we have. So what we're going to say here is our image, we're going to set this equal to a height of 20 pixels and a width, not window, we're going to say width of auto and that automatically should go ahead and start to fix some things here. And it does a little bit but right now the video <laughs> is still out of proportion so we'll get to that here in a second. So outside of this weather div we now want to work on our video, uh, the class that we have called video, okay, which is this right here that actually has our video tag in it. So we're going to say video here and we want to set the overflow on here to hidden. We're going to give this a position of absolute. We're going to set the top to zero, the left to zero. We're going to say the width is going to be set to 100% and the height is also going to be 100%. Okay. Then we want to target our actual video element here. So we're going to say video and by default we want to give this a height of 100%. Now we're also going to implement a media query here. We're going to say at media. We're going to say min width of 900 pixels. We then want to alter the height to be auto and we want the width to be 100%. So if we save that, you should see now, hopefully we have something that looks a lot better. And if we go ahead and actually increase this a little bit to see the viewport, you should see that now things are starting to resemble our actual demo here. It's just that this one's a little bit larger right now. Okay, so that's all looking great. Now, the last thing I want to tackle here is our background overlay. So just below the video tag here, we're going to open up the class of BG overlay. And we're going to say position this absolute. 
we're going to give this a height of 100%. Going to say the top and set that to zero. And actually, I want to also set the width right below that to 100%. And then we want to set a background color on here of black. So we're going to say RGBA here because we want to give it an opacity. So we're going to say 0, 0, 0. And then we want to do a 0.2 opacity. And that should go ahead and put a nice little tint on the video to make the text stand out a lot better. Okay. So that is going to be it for our city component. Now, next up or in the next video, what we're going to do is actually make it so we can start to edit our cities here when we click on the pencil icon to delete them. And also we'll get into uh, hooking up this refresh icon and also having the ability to add um, new cities.